Good afternoon. National Assembly Wales now in session. And the first item of questions to the First Minister. And question one is Mohammed Ashgar. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer, and good afternoon. First Minister, what action the Welsh Government taking to promote healthier lifestyle in South Wales East, please? Well, we're focused on ensuring a whole of society approach to improving population health including supporting healthy lifestyles, protecting communities and addressing the wider determinants of health, such as good employment, quality housing and tackling poverty. Thank you for the reply, Minister. Recent figure re produced by the Child Me Measurement Programme Wales revealed that a quarter of children in South Wales East are overweight or obese by the time they start school. Blina Gwen, Kerfili and Torwine were all above the Welsh national average of overweight and obese children starting school. What action will the Welsh government take to reverse these truly shocking statistics and to promote healthier lifestyle to parents in South Wales East? Well, in 2010, we launched the All Wales Obesity Pathway, which provides national strategic direction by setting out a tiered approach for the prevention and treatment of obesity from community-based prevention and early intervention to specialist medical and surgical services. John Griffiths. <coughs> John Griffiths. First Minister, to have a more physically active and healthier Wales, we need key organisations to come together and accept their responsibility. In that light, would you join me in welcoming the work that's taking place in my area, where the Aniron Bevan Health Board Newport Live, the Leisure Trust, Newport City Council, sports bodies and a range of others are meeting to develop joint strategy and policy for a more physically active and healthier population. Yes, I thank the member for that question. Very much welcome, of course, the uh, cross-cutting work that's being taken forward by those organisations. We know that uh, it isn't simply a case that one organisation by itself can change uh, people's habits and encourage people to do more exercise. When they come together, of course, uh, then uh, they can have a, a much greater effect. Lindsay Whittle. Well, Minister, in view of the fact that a report by Public Health Wales stated, and I quote, there is likely to be limited impact in programmes that focus on individual lifestyle behaviour change, how can we uh, justify continuing to spend public money on trying to change people's lifestyle choices when this approach is clearly failing, and many people, not me, uh, regard it as uh, the nanny state interference anyway, and do you believe there should be a greater emphasis on concentrating on children's healthy eating, please? Well, I, I think we, should, we need to uh, emphasise uh, that people can acquire good health or can improve their health at, at any age. I mean, the member's right to say that uh, with regard to children, it's important that children learn good habits uh, young. Uh, but it's also important to ensure that people are encouraged to stop smoking. We know that has an enormous effect on their health, even uh, later on in their, uh, in their lives. I don't see that as nanny-statism. I, I see that as uh, something that actively helps people to ditch a habit that actively harms their health. Jeff Cuthbert. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, will the First Minister join with me in applauding the work of Diabetes UK in preparing their book, 100 Things I Wish I'd Known About Living with Diabetes. The book is designed to collate real experiences of people with diabetes and the tips that they offer about how they are coping with the condition. Clearly, leading a healthy lifestyle is very important for someone with diabetes and especially avoiding smoking. Yes, I do very much uh, agree uh, that uh, Diabetes UK Cymru are extremely valuable partners. We know their resources have helped many people come to terms with and learn to manage their uh, condition. We do work closely with Diabetes UK uh, Cymru. Uh, they have a seat on the Diabetes Delivery Plan Implementation uh, Group. And of course, we look forward to working with them closely in the future. Question two, Mike Hedges. Does the First Minister make a statement on doctor and nurse training at Swansea University? Yes, Swansea University plays a key role in supporting the NHS in Wales through the provision of a wide range of education and training uh, programmes. Uh, I know that uh, with regard to nurse training places at Swansea, uh, we are now at the, uh, the highest level that we have seen in the course of this government uh, in terms of the nurse training places commissioned. At the moment, that figure stands at uh, 331. 
Uh, thank you, First Minister. Of course, when the Assembly was created, there were no doctors in, train, in, in training at Swansea University. That, that's only something that's come since the Assembly has been, has been here. Uh, I'm very pleased to note the increase in numbers, and I agree with the First Minister that there's a whole range of other uh, services, such as physiotherapists, etc. But uh, I don't think I'd have got past the presiding officer if I put, if I listed all of them in the question. So I stuck to doctors and nurses, but I do realise all the others are important. Uh, is this not an example of the Welsh Labour Government supporting the Welsh NHS by having more doctors and more nurses? Absolutely, we have more doctors th than ever. We're increasing the numbers of nurse training uh, places. We note with concern what's happening, of course, with nurse bursaries in England and look for more information from the, uh, the government uh, department there in terms of how that would work as far as Wales is, uh, is concerned. But the Minister did announce an £85 million package to support a range of education and training programmes uh, for healthcare uh, professionals. Uh, and we know that investing in our workforce is the key to the NHS's sustainability in the future. Susie Davis. Uh, uh, in view of the falling numbers of GPs and the ageing population of GPs, First Minister, what work has the Welsh Government done to help persuade postgraduate students who have studied at Swansea uh, to consider general practice as a career path, and how would Welsh Government encourage them to take stake in practices of their own? Well, first of all, we, we should avoid thinking that the only way for GPs to practice in the future is, is buying themselves into a practice. That model increasingly uh, is in decline, and more and more GPs wish to be salaried uh, GPs. They are equally as valid, if I can put it that way, as those who wish to buy into a, a practice. What's important, of course, is the service that's available to the, the public. We work very closely with the BMA, of course, to identify uh, any barriers that may exist uh, to recruitment of GPs. Nevertheless, we have 2,000 more GPs than we did uh, 10 years ago, and that shows, of course, that the investment that we have made as a government is bearing fruit. Peter Black. Thank you, President <coughs> Officer. First Minister, the BMA have written to the Immigration Minister um, to express concern at proposals coming out of the Migration Advisory Committee, which they say will have a devastating impact on the 500 overseas medics who, who um, graduate from UK medical schools each year um, because of the changes to visas which are being proposed by that committee. Can I ask you whether you've carried out an evaluation of the impact of the proposals on medical schools in, in Wales and whether you've also made um, representations to the UK government about those proposals? Well, no, no doubt they will be detrimental. There are some who argue that we don't control our borders. Well, I'd say that to those students who uh, aren't coming here because of visa requirements and those doctors who know feel that they cannot stay in Wales, as they would have done in years gone by, uh, in order to offer their skills to the people of Wales. I often hear the argument that somehow migrants place a burden on the health service. As far as I can see, it's those from overseas countries who actually staff much of the health service, and uh, certainly the health service is reliant and is grateful for the skills that they bring. Uh, but anything, of course, that uh, imposes a barrier on those who wish to use their skills for the benefit of the people of Wales is something that we would oppose. David Rees. First Minister, <coughs> the £85 million recently announced for training for healthcare professionals is very much welcome. That includes for nurses, but also other professionals, such as radiographers, physiotherapists, and I declare an interest at this point, my wife's a radiographer. Um, but do you agree with me that the investment by the Welsh Government in these actually complements the work of Swansea University? Because Swansea University does an excellent job in training doctors, nurses, and paramedics. And will you also look at the possibility of expanding the provision at Swansea University to include the other professions? Well, it's certainly something that will be looked at in the future uh, and has, or, has, or, has already been pointed out. Uh, at one time, uh, medical training was centred very much on Cardiff. Yes, they, they were, the medical students spent the time in hospitals around Wales, but they weren't uh, training centres in the way that Swansea is now. Uh, we know, as I said earlier, that uh, what is important is, in, is uh, investing in the workforce uh, to make sure that the people of Wales have access to the right level of services in the future. We now move to questions to party leaders. And first this afternoon, Leader of the Opposition, Andrew Archie oh, Davis. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. He's got more hair than me. First Minister. First Minister. At the moment, A&E departments and indeed hospitals are under huge pressure the length and breadth of Wales, but also the length and breadth of the United Kingdom. I, I take that point. Uh, whether it's in West Wales, South Wales or North Wales, people have been advised not to show up at hospitals because of the pressures some A&E departments are under. 
What assessment has the government made of the demand being placed on our dedicated medical workers, the length and breadth of Wales, and has any extra requests come in for resources from our health boards to support the day-to-day -day operations of our district general hospitals so that operations will not be cancelled and people will not face undue delays? First of all, the level of demand on A&E is unprecedented. It strikes me it can be difficult to assess what the level of demand will be over the course of the winter. Uh, and we see on this occasion uh, incredibly high demand. I'm grateful to the dedication of staff in A&E departments for the work that they have put in. Uh, I know that certainly as far as Espati Gwynedd is concerned today that um, some of the pressures come off Espati Gwynedd because these things tend to go up and down very quickly. Uh, there are no requests for extra resources. Uh, we know that our health boards are, are managing. With regard to not going to A&E, it comes to the, back to this point that people should choose well, that A&E is, is an emergency service that people should see the pharmacist as the first stop, uh, a nurse and a GP practice, then of course a GP themselves, rather than going straight to A&E. Of course, where people have genuine emergencies, A&E is where they should, they should go. Uh, but we do ask people at this time and at all times to consider whether in fact A&E is the best place for them to go to get the treatment that they require. One thing that would help, obviously, is the reintroduction of minor injury units, which is what my party has proposed uh, some weeks ago now. But also, the other point is that these pressures on hospitals could have a dramatic impact on waiting times. Just before the half-term recess, obviously the new waiting times were out that showed an increase again in waiting times that have doubled on your watch as First Minister. And ultimately, what people want to know is when they will have the operational procedure that obviously they have been allocated by their hospital. Can you give a commitment that your government is on top of the waiting times that have, as I said, doubled on your watch and ultimately show no respite from the spiral upwards that we've seen over the last five years? Well, I disagree with him on that. We've seen waiting times, of course, beginning to come down. We've uh, allocated extra resources to deal with uh, the issue of waiting times both now and in uh, the future. I mean, I have to say, for example, with A&E, the average wait in A&E is two hours, ten minutes still. Yes, there are more people who have uh, remained in A&E for more than 12 hours. Sometimes uh, that's because the alternative is to admit them for three days. Uh, and it's uh, often a better option for them to be in A&E for a little longer than in hospital for, for even longer. Now, we know in England that the figures originally in England show that a, a few thousand people uh, were in A&E for more than 12 hours. Now we know that figure is 124,000 because uh, BBC Radio 5 found that. So we know that there are pressures across the whole of the UK, and in fairness to the Leader of the Opposition, he pointed that out. Uh, but what we are seeing in Wales is waiting times uh, coming down, ambulance response times are improving. We're seeing, for example, uh, cancer waiting times improving as well, at their consistently high level when compared uh, with, uh, with England. Uh, and uh, I'm confident that we'll see waiting times continue to drop in the future. Well, sadly, on cancer wait times, they're not improving, First Minister. The most recent cancer wait times in my own electoral area show a, a substantial decrease down to 78% of referral times when your target is 95%. But in a leaflet that you put out in 2007, you gave a commitment that ultimately a Labour government, if elected, would deliver shorter waiting times within our NHS. That was nearly 10 years ago. At your conference this week, you were talking you're only halfway through your decade of delivery. Well, your decade of delivery has delivered one in seven people on a waiting list in Wales. That's nearly 15% of the population on a waiting list here in Wales. Also, with your pledges, you haven't committed to protecting the NHS budget. How on earth can anyone have any confidence that you will be able to get to on top of the waiting time lists that are spiralling out of control under your leadership which is the day-to-day -day effect of patients and clinicians, the length and breadth of Wales, that they're not getting the service that they need. Yeah. Well, I have to say to the Leader of the Opposition, we now know that figures in England have been massaged, because BBC, Wales, BBC Radio 5 found that over A&E waiting times for more than 12 hours. We see a record amount of money going into the Welsh NHS, some 46% of our budget. We spend 1% more per head on health in Wales than England does. 7% more on health and social care. Only today we see the LGA in England saying that social care is on the verge of collapse in England because there's not enough money going into social care. That's not happening in Wales. You can't divorce the two. One follows the other. We have a proud record in uh, ensuring our NHS uh, is working. Despite the 10% cut that we've had from his party in London to our budget, we have managed to increase health spending as a higher percentage of our overall spending, and we have done that despite the cuts that his party have imposed on us. And that is a record which we are proud to take to the people of Wales in May. We now move to Leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. Dear Llywydd, 
First Minister, you said recently in response to the GP recruitment crisis in the North, there will be issues from time to time where a GP decides to stop, but then that service is carried on by salaried GPs. From our point of view, I don't think there is a crisis. Do you accept that this response was dismissive to people's concerns, and do you regret not being more sympathetic to patients who were experiencing problems as a result of the GP recruitment crisis in the North? I have to say, I'm not aware of uh, patients suffering as a result of a, jack a lack of GPs in the North. Uh, the uh, question she asked me was over some practices which had decided not to continue as practices. Their services are being covered by salaried GPs. As far as the public are concerned, the service will remain the same. Well, First Minister, that sounds like you're in denial as to the extent of the problem. The Secretary of the North Wales Local Medical Committee believes that urgent action is needed for the out-of-hours out of service in the North. The Vice Chair of the North Wales Local Medical Committees has said the situation is at breaking point. Will you now concede that there is a recruitment crisis yeah. and will you agree that patients deserve better? Well, I accept there's a challenge to recruit GPs in some parts of Wales. That much is, is true. And there are various reasons for that that aren't to do with, with medicine, actually to, to do with the opportunities available for their, for their families. Nevertheless, we do work with the BMA, as I've said, to identify, as I said earlier on, any barriers that might exist to, uh, to recruitment. We do have 2,000 more GPs in Wales than, than was the case certainly a decade ago. And that is something that we're uh, looking to build on in the future. First Minister, Wales has fewer doctors per head of the population than all but three EU yeah. countries. You don't seem to be accepting of that fact. Is it acceptable to you, First Minister, that people are lying on the floors of emergency departments waiting to be seen? Is it acceptable to you that GPs are withdrawing their contracts? Is it acceptable to you that all but emergency cases have been turned away from a GP practice? You tell us that you are halfway through a decade of delivery, First Minister, under your stewardship. If you get a chance to see it through, what kind of NHS will we be left with at the end of your tenure? Well, we'll be left with an NHS where more is spent per head than in England, where more money has been allocated, where more money is going to mental health. It's one of the questions that she's asked me in the past. Substantially more money into child and adolescent mental, uh, health care. We will see a Wales where there is a new treatment fund for uh, life-threatening illnesses. We will see investment. We will see investment into NHS buildings. We will see further examples, for example, as we've seen in Morriston, of a brand new uh, front to the building, a fantastic, a fantastic extension of the building. It makes it much easier for people uh, to go through A and E, much easier for people to see uh, doctors. That is what we will see: good facilities for the people of Wales, paid for out of the public purse without privatisation, not her party's policy, I know that, but without privatisation, delivered free at the point of need for our people. We now move to the leader of the world. Order? Gracious me. We now move to leave the Welsh Liberal Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. First Minister, last year, following a ministerial resignation and questions raised about the operation of the ministerial code, you told the Assembly that you would be willing to ponder further potential changes to investigations under that code. Uh, could you give us an update on your pondering? Well, I, I have to say I, I pondered this issue, as she, she puts it, but uh, I do not see the need for there being some kind of independent adjudication process, and of course that doesn't exist in London either. Well, uh, I'm sorry your pondering hasn't come to a more positive uh, conclusion, First Minister. At the same time, uh, I said that it's perfectly appropriate, and indeed government should take outside advice, but that outside advice should also be transparent. When I asked you to publish details of meetings between ministers with lobbyists and pressure groups, you replied, there are none. It's not our policy to meet with lobbyists. But freedom of information requests revealed that you personally have met with external organisations 144 times since May of last year. Now, I assume, I'm assume you weren't just passing the time of day and drinking tea. Will you commit to creating an accessible register of all meetings between Welsh Government ministers and non-government organisations to be made available on the Welsh Government website? These are not lobbyists. These are organisations I've met while I've been out in around Wales, uh, businesses, organisations that I've met uh, in here in Cardiff. Uh, they're not lobbyists. We do not meet with professional lobbying companies or organisations. That is our policy, and no such meetings ever take place. Well, 
First Minister, as I said, when you meet these organisations, whatever you uh, decide to define them as, you're not just passing the time of day. Uh, no doubt they're taking the opportunity to try and influence the government's thinking, and that is perfectly acceptable. I'm asking that you make that accessible to the people of Wales so that they know who you're meeting with and what you're talking about. But can I turn to a third measure of transparency and how we do our politics here in Wales? Under current rules, the chairs of assembly committees are appointed by party leaders. Now, this is a system of patronage and control so discredited that they don't even do that in Westminster anymore. Uh, can you think of a single good reason why these posts should not be elected by the whole of the assembly rather than being in the gist of party leaders? And would you support such a change? Well, I, I don't know how these Order. offer in her party, but the committee chairs Order. in my party are not within the gift of me as leader. They're elected by the entire group and not appointed by me, and that's the way it should be. Uh, the, last thing that, that should, well, the last thing that should happen is that party leaders appoint committee chairs and, and remove them on a whim. I leave that to other parties, but it doesn't happen in my party. There has to be an element of, uh, it has to be an element of independence when it comes to scrutiny committees. When it comes to... Order... Order. Uh, sorry. When it, well, uh, the leader of the opposition is most vocal. He, of course, has sacked the committee chair. So I suppose he would know more than I do about this because I know, it, I understand within his party, it is the leader. It is the leader that appoints the chairs. It's a level of control, uh, that control freakery indeed, that we don't exhibit Order. on these benches. And in terms of the, the suggestion Order. that she made, in terms of the suggestion that she made, it's an interesting idea. Uh, and it is something I think that's worth exploring in the next assembly. Hopefully, now move to a quieter session, and we'll have uh, question three from Darren Miller. Will the first minister make a statement on support for coastal communities in Wales? Yes, our uh, flagship regeneration program, Vibrant and Viable Places, has uh, seen local authorities sharing over 100 million pounds of capital funding for regeneration schemes. Uh, that funding has been invested across Wales, including coastal communities. For example, £12 million has been provided to Colwyn Bay and £7 million to Holyhead. Uh, First Minister, you'll be aware that tourism is crucially important to the coastal economy, including in my own constituency in places like Colwyn Bay and indeed Tawyn and Kinmel Bay uh, as well. But one of the things which may put the tourism industry at risk is the potential move to four weekly bin collections uh, in my local authority area, which could see... Uh, and increase in fly tipping, litter and the pests which may uh, result uh, as a result of that. What action will you take to ensure that local authorities are responsible in the way that they manage their, uh, week, their uh, waste collection services so that these sorts of unintended consequences don't arise and don't cause a problem for tourism? Of course, the Conroy County Borough Council, they must uh, make their decision based on uh, encouraging recycling, that's true. We just don't have as many holes in the ground to put rubbish as, as, as was once the case in Wales. Uh, and also, of course, uh, to ensure that uh, the rate of collection is uh, uh, robust enough in order to avoid flight tipping, which, of course, is a consideration they must take into account when they consider what, the, uh, what system and frequency of collection they adopt. Josh Watson. Uh, uh, First Minister, of course, one uh, coastal community in my region that has received uh, special support is the Fishguard and Goodick community, which two years ago had £50,000 awarded to it from this government's Town Centre Partnership Fund. And that money has uh, helped to deliver all sorts of things and to name a few uh, uh, better Wi-Fi pop-up shops, maps and guides and, of course, the Fishguard Bay app. So, uh, Minister, could I ask, will it be the case that uh, this government will, or any future government, will assess the value of those projects so that we can take them to the next stage? Yes, uh, uh, as, as the member says, the Town Centre Partnership in Fishguard and Goodick was awarded £50,000. Uh, what's happened is that it's, it's devised and developed its own bespoke uh, actions for the locality. Town Centre app has already been uh, mentioned. There's the Abba Jazz uh, Festival as uh, well. Uh, and it's important, of course, uh, that we are able to, to assess uh, the effectiveness of that funding. But it seems that the evidence, the early evidence from Fishgard and Goodick, is that it's been put to very good use. Rina Piovet? 
Tywydd um, i hoffwn i droi at hyfywedd economaidd cymuneda arfordirol yng Nghymru fel rhan o strategaeth uh, twf glas os licio'ch chi. Ni adroddiad diweddar ar potensial yr economi forol yng Nghymru. Mi'n athe pwyllgor, menter a busnes yr ydw i'n aelod o honno bo alw am strategaeth glir yn y maes yma i gynnwys mentra yn ei uh, twristiaeth uh, amgylcheddol, uh, trafnidiaeth ac yn y blaen. Ydy'r prif wneud o gan cytuno Efo'n hargraff ni fel pwyllgor bod y mateb y llywodraeth yma i ddatblygu'r economi forol wedi bod yn ddarniog, yn ffragmented, ac nad os nad ystiolaeth ddigonol o weithredu fel llywodraeth gyfan, rhywbeth sy'n hanfodol mewn ardaloedd cwbl arfordirol fel yn etholaeth i Ynys Môn. Wel, wrth edrych ar Ynys Môn, wrth gwrs, mae'n potensiol mawr ar Ynys i ddatblygu Ynys Ynni. Uh, gyda'r pwar yn newydd a fydd yn dod, yn gobeithio yn, yn y mesur, mesur Cymru, byddai'n rhwyddach felly i ddatblygu uh, potensial na, mae'r potensial mawr yng Nghargabu. Ni wedi'i wrthgwrs sicrhau bod 7 miliwn o bennoedd ar gael i Gargabu hefyd. Ynglyn ag Ynys Môn, wrthgwrs, ni wedi bod yn ddefa ddatblygu ni'r um, llwybr ar rwyn dyr Ynys hefyd, ac yn dal i weithio gyda'r cyngorau mwyn datblygu economi a thwristiaeth Ynys Môn uh, yn ymhellach. Aled Roberts? Gael ofyn pa ystyriaeth sydd wedi cael ei wneud ynglyn â um, yr effaith o ran um, y problemau o ran y llifogydd a'r rhaglen um, dych chi'n newydd gyfeirio at efo Save a Vibrant People and Places Scheme. Os na waith ychwanegol fydd rhaid i ei wneud o achos y difrod sydd wedi cael ei achosu uh, yn yr adaloedd ar y glanau. Na, os ydych chi ar bai, ar bai colwyn, wrth gwrs, mae'r mae ato waith wedi cael ei wneud fan na dros y blynyddau, fydd i'n mynd dwy waith i'r gynolfan um, chwaraeon dŵr, uh, a mwna ddarblygiad bod i dros ben uh, i'r, uh, i'r dre hunan. Ni wedi uh, fydsoddi, wrth gwrs, uh, yn uh, ynglyn a gamddiffyn yn erbyn llifogydd mewn sawl ran uh, o Gymru, ac wrth gwrs, wnes i ddatganiad uh, sawl wthnos yn ôl ynglyn a delio gyda sefyllfa ar a pimp pimp a hefyd uh, Talabond. Gwestiwn ffwrs, Lea Griffith. Gwestiwn ffwrs, Lea Griffith. Diolch llywydd, a wna i ffwrs prif wneud o ddatganiad am flaen o'r eithau strategol y cynllun datblygu gwledig. O prif amcan uh, cymunedig gwledig Llywodraeth uh, Cymru, sef wrth gwrs y rhaglen datblygu gwledig yw cefnogi'r economi wledig ac am y thyddiaeth yn benodol trwy gyfnod o newid sylweddol. Ydych chi'n ymwch ateb, wrth gwrs, mi agorwyd y ffenest geisiadau ar gyfer chwech cynllun uh, o, o dan uh, y cynllun datblygu gwledig yn gynharach y mis yma. Petai uh, y ceisiadau gyd yn cael eu talu allan, ni'n nison am rhyw ddau gant a hanner o ceisiadau llwyddiannus i chi hefyd wedi cyhoeddi nawr fydd dim ffenest yn agor ar gyfer glasdyr entry, felly fydd yn rhyw 1600 ddim yn gallu parhau uh, i, i gyflawni'r gwaith ar y lefel benodol yna. Nawr mi'n add holl fel mwyr Cymru, wrth gwrs, gyfrannu 500 o bil yr un i bil yr dau er mwyn ariannu y cynllun datblygu gwledig. Ond y realiti yw, uh, mae carfan fechan iawn sydd yn mynd i lwyddo i gael mynediad i llawer o'r arian yna. Felly, gael ofyn beth i chi wneud i sicrhau er mwyn gweld y newid traws newidiol i nisio gweld ar draws y diwydiant, wrth bod chi'n sicrhau bod nifer digonol o meithwyr yn cael acces i'r arian yna. Ne fel arall, bydd yr arian yn mynd, wrth gwrs, i garfan rhy fach o lawer i weld y newid sylweddol i'n i gyd am i weld. Fe fydd yna, wrth gwrs, y gwynidog ddatganiad uh, pythefnos yn ôl ynglyn a doi cynllun grant sydd mynd i ddim ar ffenest wedi, wedi agor. Mae 7.7 miliwn o bunodd wedi cael eu dal i lani nawr ynglyn â chyllidor cynllun newydd. Ac wrth gwrs, mae arian wedi cael ei ymrwymo hefyd i, i rai grwpiau ynglyn â'r rhaglen sydd gyda nhw'n y dyfodol. Wrth gwrs, ni wedi sicrhau bod rhan fwyaf o ffermwyr yn gallu cael cymorth o dan y cynllun dat, datblygu gwledig. Wrth gwrs, y broblem mawr yw, bydd na gynllun datblygu gwledig gyda gronfa Ewropeaidd ar gael yn y pen draw. Mwyna add gwrs yn gwestiwn i blaid arall yn y siambr hyn. Russell George. Uh, First Minister, you will be aware that the Sustainable uh, Production Grant has a minimum spend of £40,000, with 40% 40 of this then eligible to be funded. Now, in this current farming cri uh, climate, I'm sure you will be agree it's very uh, difficult for farmers to commit uh, to such significant investment. There are, there are very few members who have applied as a result of the limited scope. I'm aware of your previous answer and the, and the Minister's statement a few weeks back. Uh, but how are you going to address <coughs> the RDP is made more accessible to a greater proportion of farmers? Well, I have to say, uh, his uh, party leader yesterday, uh, his view was that there should be even less accessibility uh, to, uh, to this scheme, given the fact that he is, uh, 
he, he is, he is in, he's going to vote to leave the EU, but not to campaign to leave the EU, I understand, uh, and wishes to remove more than £200 million of support from Welsh farmers. Uh, now, what, what, he's, what he's not explaining, mean, it's, it's a matter for him, but uh, we await the explanation as to where that money is going to come from in the future, because we certainly can't afford it here. Uh, from our point of view, we will continue to support Welsh farming. We will continue to access European funds. Welsh Labour will stand up for Welsh farmers as the Welsh Tories sell them down the river. William Powell. Your Clement. First Minister, as you've just said, uh, the decision by the Leader of the Opposition yesterday to oppose uh, British membership of the European Union reaches the very consensus that has taken place within this chamber over the past 17 years. In that period, the Rural Development Plan over three consecutive periods has delivered over £100 million of investment into rural communities in Wales. In that context, First Minister, and given the danger of other wild-eyed zealots heading for the cliffs also, <laughs> would, it, would it not be prudent for this Welsh Government would it not be prudent for this Welsh Government to ramp up the conversation with rural communities across Wales so that there is a fuller understanding of what is at stake in the months to come? Oh, I, 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 I recognise the passion that, that the member has displayed over what is the most important constitutional issue we will face this year. Uh, and Welsh farmers will note that apparently one of their own believes that uh, their subsidies should be put in, in jeopardy. I mean, what the expert. <laughs> He will have the chance to explain himself, I know, and he said he will. But the question for us is this. Welsh farming receives more than £200 million worth of direct subsidy every year. Where is that money going to come from in the future? Where is it going to come from in the future? It cannot come from Welsh Government. It's, it's too much money for us to be able to afford. The reality is that Welsh farmers know where they stand at the moment, and they will resist being invited to jump off the edge of a cliff in the hope there's a net the other side, uh, as they've been invited to do by the Leader of the Opposition. Do you know, there are terrible echoes here today. I'm sure the Chamber hasn't changed since last week, so it must be the people in it. Um, please, uh, let the Ministers answer and other people ask their questions. Question five is now William Graham. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on the effectiveness of Welsh Government investment in the upgrading of school buildings? Yes, our 21st Century Schools programme will see investment of £1.4 billion over the five-year period of 2019. All 22 authorities will benefit from this investment, which will see the rebuild and refurbishment of 150 schools and colleges across Wales. And to date, 96 projects have been approved within the programme. I'm grateful to the First Minister for his answer. Uh, he may recall in 2006, Rodri Morgan, your predecessor, say, stated that many of our Welsh schools were trash-built hence the programme you have to put in hand now. But your funding is reduced from 50% to 30% of that funding and gives rise to situations that happened in Newport, Dufferin High School in Newport. You will know there that the, the possibility still is to have a Welsh medium school on the same site, releasing some funds to do up the school. And yet the NRW sabotaged that application at the very latest part of the consultation. Can that be avoided in the future? Well, it's a matter for the, uh, uh, for the Council, of course, uh, what happens in terms of planning. Uh, just to make it absolutely clear, as the Member knows, that the issue of the refurbishment of Dufferin and the building of a new Welsh medium uh, comprehensive school are not issues of, of finance. The money's there. Uh, it was an issue where a planning application was rejected. I understand that there will be a fresh planning application, and then, of course, it's a matter for the Council to, uh, to decide. But the money is there uh, to refurbish the schools through our programme, and there are some planning issues, clearly, that do need to be resolved. Lenny Hope. Mr Minister, Tovine mm. Council is currently consulting on the closure of Victoria Village and Brinteg Nursery Schools in Tovine as part of the 21st Century Schools programme. Uh, and I've raised numerous concerns throughout the statutory consultation process. I realise that you cannot comment on an individual school closure proposal, but in a recent letter to me, the Deputy Minister indicated that the new school closure process in Wales, which I have a lot of concerns about, will be subject to a review by Welsh Government. Can I ask for your assurances that any review will take into account the views of parents and communities? And can I ask you to discuss this with the Minister for Education to ensure that happens? Can I thank the member for raising this issue? I know this is an issue she's been very active on in her uh, community. I understand she has a meeting uh, with the uh, Deputy Minister, Julie James, planned in any event. And I know that she will make uh, the case uh, forcefully on behalf of the constituency. Simon Thomas. Uh, 
the offshore with. Of course, or the Escolion Cali had no within I Escolion now with and Dordani Lay, Mana Perig, Akinian Guelde, Oilele, or Ian Garvan Yath and Caligos or the Nedbin, Carvan Yath Avash, Akini Guadanga Tino, Anglina de Vodal Escolion Seisneg, a food Kamaig, a Escolion Kamaig, and Clevith Moan Vuyola Hulforth, a sheep of Hainoga Hinabid. Beth mae'r llywodraeth yn neud i sicrhau felly bod uh, uh, hawliau a'r uh, dewisiadau iaith yn cael eu cydnabod yn y broses o adeiladu a, a crai ysgolion o'r newydd, a hefyd o gofio dych chi ddim ar eich targed o hyn y byd yn genedlaethol i gyfaith yn nod o gael uh, plant i mewn i ysgolion Cymraeg, sydd eich chi'n mynd i sicrhau bod y cynllun yma yn dapafu ar gyfer y pwrpas hwnnw. Cwestiwn uh, sy'n uh, berthnasol iawn. Um, yn gyntaf, wrth gwrs, beth sy'n bwysig i'w bod out of the field and get the government to study it. I can see the strategic Addis Gamrags. I get them to say the Wesps. Melanie knows because he's sick of high blood. I can see you. Tia got a galus in a Madis Gamrag. In order to some of the credit, see the Achosi. Say you do in a bit in a bit in a shag world. And Lina Nevis and the Scotland Gamrag. You a pester. Sydd goffo teithio mewn rai rhan o Gymru i fynd i ysgol Gymraeg. Mae ffaith fydd yn ysgol gyfyn newydd yn cas newydd, nid gobeithio bod yn help. Gobeithio, wrth gwrs, gweld mwy o, o drefniadau ni ag addysg Gymraeg yn yr ysgolion uwchradd ymhywys hefyd. Os mae'r rheini'n gweld bod yn rwydd i fynd i ysgol Gymraeg a hefyd yn rwyddach i fynd i ysgol gyfyn, felly i fi mwyn help mawr i sicrhau bod uh, rhieni yn ystyried addysg drwy iaith Gymraeg, nid dim ond yn ysgolion cynradd, os ni'n gwybod ni'n colli plant uh, o'r ysgolion cynradd, ond trwy uh, oes i plant nhw trafod yn yr ysgol. First Minister, had the Conservatives won the last election, uh, the 20% cut in education they would have imposed would have meant there would be no 21st yeah. century schools yeah. programme. Yeah. 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 Which, which would mean, First Minister, that a pant, the new £24 million a pant school in my constituency would not go ahead. Yeah. The £43 million schools uh, for Tony Revel would not go ahead. There would not be a new school at Cloyne Croon in Bather, and there would not be a new school for Williamstown in Penruver, and many other multi-million pound upgrades in my constituency would not have proceeded yeah. had the Tories won the last election and were they to win the next one. Could you outline for me, because of the success of this programme, what the government's plans are in terms of the next phase of uh, Welsh Labour's 21st century school building programme? We still have a lot of work to do, First Minister. Well, the member is correct to point to all the new schools that have been built in his uh, constituency, and we will continue uh, with our programme to make sure we replace schools across Wales and refurbish schools where that refurbishment is needed. I remind the party opposite, one of the first things that they did when they went into government in London was to slash the school building yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, to an extent that, that almost nothing is now happening in England. We will not do that just to uh, children in Wales. And I remember before the last uh, Assembly election, and in fairness it was, it was a different leader they had then, but he appeared live on Wales Today saying that there would be a 20% cut in education. Yeah. Since the election, the party opposite has said, no, no, it's not 20%, it's 12%. Oh. And now they're saying, well, that figure's out of date, but we haven't crunched the numbers yet in the, <laughs> in the exact words of the uh, leader of the opposition. The people of Wales would be delighted to know what the scale of the cut is that the party opposite the Conservative Party actually proposes. Robert. Prymwyd i dod, un o'r heri eri sy'n gwneud bu'n rhyw lywodraeth i wella cyflwr ysgolion i wedi presen oldeb asbestos. Um, Gai ofyn i chi felly, mae'n amlwg bod na'n weithgor arbennig wedi cael ei sefydlu yn llwygr gan yr adronafysg sydd yn delio efo hyn, ond mae'n hwd i bod yn hollol glir yn deud bod gynnyn nhw gyfrifoldeb ond tua llwygr. Felly, gai ofyn i chi wrth gofio bod y gweithgor yna yn cynnwys aelodau o undebau llafur arbennigwyr penodol, uh, os na le i ni edrych ar gweithgor tebyg yng Nghymru, neu fos eich chi'n barod i ofyn am gynrychioleth o Gymru ar y gweithgor yn Llundyn. Well, of course, yr HSC sydd yn gyfrifol, ynglyn â'r sicrhau bod ysgolion yn saff. Mae yna gynllawiaeth ni wedi rhoi allan uh, i um, rhyna sydd... Well, uh, rhyna sydd... Uh, perchnogion sydd â dyletswydd, duty holders yn, yn Saesneg, er er mwyn bod nhw'n gwybod yn gwmws beth yw eu dyletswyddau uh, nhw. Uh, ag wrth gwrs, bod nhw'n gwybod beth yw i dod trwy ddewod dan um, rheoliadau uh, iechyd a diogelwch. Uh, Mae yna grŵp gweithredu wedi cael i sefydlu, er mwyn sicrhau bod yn cynllawiaeth ni uh, yn, uh, yn gallawiaeth sydd, sydd yn briodol uh, i, i, i'r dyfodol, a hefyd i uh, adolygu um, polisi a chynllawiaeth yng Nghymru. 
Uh, question six is Anne Jones. What assessment has the First Minister made of the recent OECD report on the review of health care quality in the UK? Well, I mean, this highly respected international body found quality at the heart of the Welsh health system and that we prioritise high quality in patient-centred care. And the definitive report does finally put to rest the claims that a particular health service in one part of the UK is better than the others. Uh, well, thank you very much for that assessment. And I, I'm, um, I believe as well that the OECD report went in very, very deeply into the new primary care situation that is developing in, in my own constituency following the, the funding model of, of uh, GP surgeries, um, finally sort of showing up that uh, when, when they want to give in, they can, give, they can retire and leave, it, leave their, their patient list there. The primary care centre that we're going to have uh, to replace uh, two surgeries in, in Prostatin, I think, is, is noted within the OECD report as the model to take forward primary care. And I know you will agree with me that it's time that the UK government actually looked over this border with envy at the way in which we actually negotiate and we actually um, value all our working staff in the NHS mm. and it's about time that Cameron and Hunt actually conceded to your request that they should apologise profoundly and profusely yeah, yeah, yeah. for the damage that they have done to the dedicated hard-working members of our Welsh NHS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well here we have the independent evidence uh, that shows uh, that the claims made by the Prime Minister were, were, were fallacious. It's, uh, it's, it's as simple as that and yes you've heard my uh, request that he should apologise. He hasn't done it yet. But one thing I can promise uh, the people of Wales is that we're not going to import the Tories' junior doctor strike into Wales. Uh, we will treat our medical staff with respect. We will talk to them rather than force contracts on them. Darren Miller. Presiding officer, we'll get back to the reality, shall we? The fact is that the OECD did not consider waiting times for diagnostic tests, and they did not consider either waiting times for treatment. And the facts are. First Minister, that if you live in Wales, you are more likely to be on a waiting list, you're more likely to wait longer for your diagnostic test, you're more likely to wait longer for your diagnostic treatment. It is a disgusting record for your government uh, to have, absolutely shameful. Why is it that people wait longer for their heart bypass operations? Why is it that people wait longer for their cataract operations, their hernia operations and their hip operations, up to almost three times as long if you live in Wales when compared to England. That is unacceptable. Those are the facts. That's your record. He always gets high pitched and he's desperate. Have you noticed that about, him, about the member for, uh, for Chloe on, West? I mean, let, me, let me remind him. Stephen Miller, there is no need to shout in this chamber, particularly when you're sitting down. And that's including you, Andrew Archie Davis. Please, please, just stop. First Minister. Well, uh, so this was makes a difference from the shouting at each other, which is what we've seen in the past few days. But, uh, the reality of the situation is this. This is what the OECD report actually said. Quality is at the heart of the Welsh health system. The importance of high quality in patient-centred care is given a high-level priority. Continuously improving the quality of care is a deeply established and widely shared commitment to the Welsh health system. A clear effort has been made in Wales to use patient concerns and complaints to improve quality of care. Wales is ahead on securely linking individuals' health and social care data and is actively using some quality indicators. The commitment by staff and the public to the values of the NHS in Wales seems strong. A good range of health system information, including on quality, is systematically collected in Wales. Je Darren Miller, will you listen to the answer? First Minister. The introduction of a three-year planning cycle for the Welsh NHS is a step forward from yearly budget cycles. The creation of primary care clusters has the potential to be an important resource in Wales. Wales has a rich quality monitoring and improvement architecture. The Thousand Lives campaign has been a successful way of fostering a culture of quality improvement. The Wales Surgical Materials Testing Laboratory is an interesting model for other OECD countries. I could go on. We spend more on health in Wales per head than England does. And that's why the party opposite is so desperate and shrill with their comments. Eleanor Parrott. Uh, Jill Flowers. Uh, yes, First Minister, you do spend more per capita perhaps on health in Wales than any other nation, but according to the OECD report, no consistent picture emerges of one of the United Kingdom's four health systems performing better than the other. That's not including, of course, waiting times, as Darren Miller has said. Well, clearly, in terms of health budget, size isn't everything. Why does your government, by your own logic, 
get a worse return on investment in terms of patient outcomes and experience against money invested in the health service than any other part of the UK. If she, if she looks at the report, she will see that there are areas where the Welsh NHS does better than the English NHS. There are areas where the converse is true, that's correct, and those are the areas where, where there needs to be improvement. But what we do know is when it comes to waiting times that England is massaging its figures. Now, people ask me what the evidence of that is, I'll, I'll say it. BBC Radio 5 found that when it came to a &E waiting times of more than 12 hours, that the figure, official figure was a few thousand, the actual figure is 124,000. And of course, why? Because England counts its walk-in centres as A&E &E centres, uh, and of course we don't have walk-in centres in Wales. Uh, it's an easy way to, uh, to present your figures if you have that figure. One thing I can promise members in this chamber is we will never reduce health spend per head in Wales to the levels that they are under the Tories in England. Question seven, Kirsty Williams. Will the First Minister make a statement on education provision in Brecon and Radnorshire? Yes, provision of education in this area is the responsibility of the local authority. It has to decide how many and what type of schools should be provided and ensure with the regional consortium that these are able to provide the best possible outcomes for pupils. Uh, thank you very much, First Minister. I'm sure you are aware that hundreds, literally hundreds of people, gathered outside County Hall in Clundering Dodwells this morning mm -hmm. to protest at the proposals being put forward by the Council with regards to the reorganisation of secondary schools in both Breconshire <laughs> and Radnorshire. First Minister, it grieves me to say this, but I think the people of my constituency have lost all confidence in the ability of the Cabinet of Powys County Council to successfully plan for the future of education in that part of the county. And their question to me this morning is, what is the Welsh Government going to do about it? There is no evidence to suggest that the plans put forward will improve the educational output for the county and for the children but there is plenty of evidence that the county's proposals are setting community against community and are potentially setting language against language. And would you agree with me that there's no way to recruit and retain the best teaching staff in the county and it is no way to inspire the young people of Brecon and Radnorshire to achieve in their schools? Uh, the, the, the member represents um, the case made by her constituents powerfully. She'll understand. Uh, that Welsh Ministers can't comment on individual um, reorganisation proposals, but it stands to reason that where there are fresh proposals, that there's as much consultation as possible, uh, where the views of the public are taken into account, uh, and the decisions are based entirely on what is best for, for children. Uh, she has made the point that um, she's concerned that language is being set against language, community against community. Uh, that does concern me uh, greatly, and I think it's hugely important that, uh, that Powys uh, is able to reconcile uh, those issues and to provide an education system that commands the support of parents. Uh, it is their decision at the end of the day uh, and of course it takes into account the views of parents. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I have accepted an urgent question, understanding order 12.66, and I call on Claire Griffiths to ask the question. Claire Griffiths. Uh, will the Minister make a statement on emergency pressures at Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board? Thank the member for the question. Much like other parts of the United Kingdom, urgency and emergency care services in North Wales have experienced a period of significant pressure and demand since the turn of the year. There remain a high level of presentations and ambulance arrivals at A&E, and all staff are working hard to deliver safe and effective services. Uh, Deputy Minister, I was made aware uh, by nurses in Wrexham uh, recently that a code red alert uh, had been issued in the Mailer Hospital a couple of weeks ago, actually, and that uh, A&E there was closed. Uh, for a short period of time. We know that Betsy Cadwallader, of course, has been in special measures under your uh, government for uh, eight months now, and it doesn't seem, uh, when we see these kinds of incidents, that uh, there's much light at the end of this particular uh, tunnel as things stand. Now, it is true, as the First Minister reminded us, that some people don't need to be uh, in A&E, but, of course, because you've closed minor injury units, because you failed to staff GP services appropriately and failed to provide a good out-of-hours GP service, uh, then that gives... Uh, many people little option but to go to A and E. Now we know that doctors and nurses and other staff are doing a sterling job under the pressure that they face but it is taking its toll on them uh, and of course having a knock-on effect. So would you not agree uh, uh, Deputy Minister that we urgently need to train and recruit more doctors and nurses so that we can tackle the staffing crisis that we are experiencing uh, in North Wales so that we can ease the pressure on the service uh, and make our NHS better? Well, I do regret 